Hi guys, figured I would do a live today. It feels like it's been forever since I've done one. And I figured in this one I will show you how I dolled up the little stands that I got from Target. And then also show you uh, what I've come up with for the spools of faux fur that I got from uh, Joann's. But there will be an extra little tip in there because uh, this morning I did get uh, injured um, doing the little trick that I, I plan on doing. So, first of all, these are the little stands that I got. I ended up getting two of them. Got them at Target. And they look great just the way they are, but I thought, you know, if I'm going to put a mushroom on there, I would love to have it just jazzed up just a little bit more than this because it is pretty plain. And so what I came up with, since the mushrooms are in like a, a forest or a more nature um, area, I figured this would look a lot better on my table. Hi, Teresa. And then I'll show you how I got these colored the way they are. It's a pretty simple, simple trick. But I think before I do, before I do that, I'm going to show you this trick with this fur. When I got it, it had plastic around it, so I thought this was all one, one width. When I got it home, I noticed it's only half the size. And I kept thinking, well, I want my beard to be wider than that. This would be perfect for a small one, but for some of the ones like this size of a mushroom, I want it to be a a wider um, beard. So what I came up with was I cut two little strips and it's the same height as my little pattern or my little template. So I thought if I piece them together I can put hot glue right where that seam is. This is the tricky part. You need to be very careful. Make sure you are aware of your surroundings. Try not to multitask like I was this morning because I was trying to work the TV. I was dealing with the granddaughter. And make sure both, both pieces have the fur going the same way. You cut it the length you want and then you put it really close together. When I put this glue on there, I mean, you really need to pay attention and make sure that that glue is completely dry before it gets touched. Because while I was multitasking this morning, I did burn my hand pretty good. Um, you'll see me, I have an ice pack over here because I'm still having to ice it. It blistered but didn't fill up with um, liquid or anything. But it's still sore, but the show must go on, and I'm going to keep crafting. Um, so there's that. So I'm going to go ahead and show this tip. Just, I will repeat over and over again. Make sure this is the only thing you're doing at the time, because if you place your hand or arm, anything in it, you will get burnt. So I have them placed close together and then right where that seam is I'm going to place some hot glue right down that seam. And then on each side of that bead of glue you're going to do another bead. That way it's going to give you a nice thick spot. So with this you have to let it dry until it cools. Uh, and it takes a little bit for that. Um, but the result is really cute. I'll show you some of the other, like this one here. I pieced it together. You can tell right, right there is that seam. 
but I mean, the more you play around with it, you, you're not going to really tell once it's on that, um, mushroom or on your gnome. This one I, ple I pieced together. The seam is right here, but it works out pretty good. This one, this is the one I burnt my hand on. Um, it's not as pretty where the seam is just because there was a, a little bit of cussing and um, it dried a little bit before I got back to it. But for the trauma that happened with it, it does still look pretty good and I still will be able to use it. Now I do have some that is a lighter pastel. The fur on it isn't as long and the backing isn't as thick. So when I tried it, it's not as, it's really flimsy. It's probably not something that I will use for um, the beards, but at least I gave it a shot. I'll use it for other things. <clears throat> Just, I probably will not use it for the beard. Now you can see it's starting to dry and it'll, it's going to turn like a cloudy or a milky white. Um, as soon as that dries fully, that's when I will cut it to shape this beard. While that's drying, I'm going to just set it off to the side. Um, and then I'll set this down here as well. I'm going to sh start showing you what all I did to this here. These art skills markers, I end up getting a set of them from Walmart. And these ones here, I can't remember if I got them at Walmart or if I got them at the Dollar Tree. It might be the Dollar Tree, but I just wanted three different shades of brown so I have three different effects. Hi Cindy. This here I got from a lady um, in town. Um, she has a site called What the Cardi and I bought it from her. Hi Becca. All right so with these markers and I don't I don't remember which one I did on each one over there. I'm not going to make them um, matchy-matchy. Just for the simple fact, I used the spring moss for around the edge on that one, but I don't think I have enough of that spring moss for these. So I ended up getting this forest moss, and I think that one's going to work just as good. So on these ones here that I got from Walmart, there's a small end or a wide thick end, and I'm going to use that thick end and just color the top of my display. You'll want to make sure that you have a marker that is not drying out or that you have enough to color your um, your project. Teresa, it's one of my go-to uh, patterns. I love the animal print. Anytime I see something with the, the leopard or even like a giraffe or whatever, I gravitate towards it. I like that it's just, it's a, maybe it's a little bit of wild side in, in the person, but I think it kind of helps keep us young. <laughs> So all that I'm doing is coloring. I'm not really doing it any, there's no rhyme or reason. Um, it's just kind of giving it that stained look on the top here. And if, if you wanted, you could also do um, like the wood burning. Cindy, she does have a Facebook. It's, it's What the Cardi. 
and her name is Tebble. And she's got tons of amazing stuff, so. You'll have to check her out. So there's one. And then you just let it dry. And then these are wide tip ones as well. cherry one I'm gonna go up here so it's just a wide one and I'm just gonna do the same thing so it's just coloring once you get the top done you can also do the sides if you wanted that way if any of it shines through you have that color and I didn't do the stems, but you can do that if you want as well. There's no wrong way of doing it. I just wanted it to kind of be dolled up for, for when I do the market. And I'm left-handed. <clears throat> that is the hand that I burnt. So if you see me switching out... Be prepared, it might look a little wonky because I don't normally do anything with uh, writing or with pens or anything with my right hand. But if I have to ice it, I'll switch hands. And I've been kind of just trying to do full strokes on there. You don't have to. On the other one, I did just kind of scribble, and it turned out just fine. It's just going to look like you stained it. Oh, and I am sorry. I forgot to silence my, my stuff. So I just now took care of that. So we should be good now. This one was cherry. This one says oak. I want to say I got these at the Dollar Tree, but I really don't remember. It could have been it could have been Walmart. And you could make all of these all the same color if you wanted. But I kept thinking, well, you know, there might be different types of trees, and this will make it look like there's different ones in there. Teresa, I did think of putting ribbon around the edges as well, but then once I saw the moss, I thought, nope, I'm definitely doing that one. But the ribbon would look just as good. And it goes pretty fast. And this wood does take the ink really well. It looks like that beard is dry. When I'm done with the top here, I'll switch over to it and show you how I did that. Hi, Roxanne. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get my live in because my granddaughter has been very talkative today and I couldn't remember what time they were my daughter had to take her to daycare so I wasn't sure if I was gonna get this live in but I'm so glad I I'm able to do it 
and I'm glad you guys are able to to watch and visit with me. So then there's that. Hi, Mella. Okay, so this is what it looks like when I pieced it together. And that's nice and dry. Again, make sure it is dry and make sure that is the only task you're doing at the time because uh, my hand is, I did this quite a while ago this morning and it's still pretty sore. So if you see me just resting my hand, it's on, it's on an ice pack. <clears throat> so what I do is I just laid my template on there. Then you just go under, you're just going to snip that backing. You're not going to do the fur. So your blade is going underneath. So when I go to do this side, see how you're not seeing my blade? It's because it's underneath that fur and I'm just catching that backing. After I burnt my hand, my granddaughter was like, don't cut your finger. You're going to do that next. Don't cut your fingers. <laughs> she was so worried about me. Made sure to help me get the ice pack and everything. Trace of the shelf. I ended up getting, I found that in that like $5 section at Target. Um, my, my daughter and I took my granddaughter uh, birthday shopping on Monday and when we went to Target they had those they were five dollars a piece all right so there it is and I left it to where you can see where that crease is but what I do is I take my comb and after that is nice and dry I'm gonna brush it one way then I'm going to brush it down and then I'm going to brush it the other way and then you just kind of mess it up and with the other ones you couldn't see it as much but this one this one here You'll probably find that the furs will be different, but there you go. When you glue it on your, your gnome, it's going to look really nice. And I've been brushing it because I found when I, when I cut this one, I got these, uh, these faux fur, um, spools at, uh, Joanne Fabrics. I noticed when you brush it, it does take quite a bit of it out of there from when you cut it. But it works really cute. And they had so many different colors. So this is one I thought, oh, I'll get it for the rainbow one. And it had plastic on there, so I thought it was this size. I did not realize it was half and it was wrapped around several times. Um, here's the other one. And I also got the light brown, the gray, and the darker brown. And of course, I ended up taking advantage. I want to say these were like 30% off or something like that. And then at the register, they also gave me another coupon uh, the lady had. Roxanne, do you have the pastel one? Do you, do you like it? I noticed that one's really flimsy compared to the other ones. Um, I'm sure it'll work for... For gnomes but I don't think it'll work or give me the uh, the end result that I'm wanting 
So I think I'm going to use it for something else. But I love this one because it has the longer, the longer fur. You'll have to let me know how your project goes and maybe send me a picture. And then also, I was going to show you, I ended up getting these mushrooms. They didn't have them that first time I was there, or if they did, I didn't see them. Uh, but I made sure to grab four of these. They have a green, a blue, a red, and then this yellowy, yellowy one. Um, so I got one of each of those. That was at Hobby Lobby. These here, I got them at Joann's. And I kept thinking, oh, if I get two, I could have a mom and a dad and two kids. Or Mother's Day, Father's Day. Either way, it would work. So these, I ended up, um, I can't remember how much they were, but they were on sale as well. I have, I saved all of my um, receipts for when I want to price stuff for market. When I got to Hobby Lobby, I ended up getting those four, and then I got two of these. One more of these. And I ended up getting two of these. This was a big hit before. And two of the small ones. And then when we went to Dollar Tree, I'm going to put these back and I'll work on those another time. I'm not going to do them in this live, but I want to get a lot of, of the mushroom gnomes done for market. But when I went to Dollar Tree, I ended up getting these, which these will become magnets. And then this part here will be their hats, and then I'll have the beard and nose underneath. But I'm not going to work on tons and tons today because I do have a gal that's meeting me at uh, 2 o'clock. So I don't want to run the, um, the live too long. But I do want to do some of the gnomes and finish this, this little display. So for the display, I'm going to use this. And it'll, it'll be messy. I'm just warning you now. Uh, you can use scissors to cut it if it's too much, but I want to be able to put this along the sides. The spring moss probably works a little bit better for my liking, just because it goes where you want it and it's not as high. But with this, I'm able to cut it, so I'm not too worried, um... And once I have it glued down, I can always trim it. So I'm going to go ahead and place my glue where I want it. Be careful when you do this as well because that glue is going to want to drip down. But you just place it where you want it. And then once I have it all the way done and around, that's when I will trim it up and it will give me a really cute um, effect to display my gnomes. And when I did the other one, the hardest part was right where this back part where these meet, just because of the extra bars and everything on there. But it's totally, it's totally doable. Oh, and I got to show you this. I got my nails done uh, the other day, so it is totally ready for market. I have that gnome on my, my finger. I love how they turned out. And the pieces that you snip off, 
you can just kind of gather that up and place it place it in the glue so there's none uh, there's no waste you can reuse what what you pulled off of there here. As I'm going, I'll go ahead and snip some of this down. It's already looking really, really cute. Just be sure when you place it, and I mean, you can use the little pink um, finger protectors. I kind of make it thick enough to where it's not going to come through that to burn me. As you can see, I'm kind of accident prone, so um, it's good that I have those finger protectors when I'm going to need them. So I've just been snipping what I'm not using. <laughs> Anytime I go to the store, um, any store, when we went to Marshall's, I was doing the same thing. Looking to see if there's anything that I can use for displays. Just something to change things up a little bit. And if they're, if they're plain, you can always doll them up. And you don't have to go out and buy all this stuff. I mean, you can use what you have on hand. Ribbon would work. Um, the moss. And I mean, this is already looking really, really cute. And I'll trim that up a little bit more um, to my liking. But it's already looking super, super cute. Yes, the Dollar Tree's mushrooms, those ones are smaller, and I've got some of those still to decorate as well. Oh, I never would have thought fingernail polish would be really good to use to uh, change up colors. Good tip.
So right now all I'm doing is just kind of trimming and getting this how I like it now that I have the and if it's too bushy in one spot you can trim that up with the scissors as well that's what I like about the moss too is it's workable and it doesn't have to be you don't have to settle with how it is you know you can always trim it up to where it works for you And I love the fact that I can just scoop up all the extra and reuse it so there's no waste. But I love this effect. I love the effect that it, it, that it gives off. So I'm going to show you. That looks so much better when you put the mushroom on there than when it's plain. I mean, it would work either way, but for my liking, I don't know. I just want to doll it up a little bit. Thank you so much for the hearts. And I think with the the colored, with the marker, it just makes it pop just a little bit more. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and... Start on the next one. Hi, Auntie. All right, so then I'm just doing the same thing on these. So I'll take this moss and just place it around the edge. And it's going to give that, just that extra little pizzazz to it to where it's not so plain. And then it can be trimmed up after it's all, all on there. And sometimes, I mean, it's messy, but sometimes those are the most fun uh, projects to do is when there's a little bit of a mess. And I wasn't sure how this stuff was going to do with my allergies because a lot of times um, with the the outdoorsy stuff my allergies tend to act up quite a bit but I'm not having any issues uh, with this at all And I like that this isn't going to take very long, so it's a pretty quick craft. So it's really good, it's a good craft for somebody that's on the go. The hardest part is the cleanup. You'll just have to take a few seconds to wipe everything up and...
turn some of this up and then I'll be able to use some of that I got the shelf at Target. It was five dollars in there when you first walk in and they have that five dollar and under um, section. That is where I got the little display. And I have to admit, I kind of squealed when I when I found it. I get a lot of weird looks when I go shopping because I do a lot of oohs and ahs and little squeals. And when you trim it up, you'll, you'll find where you've missed a spot or something and that's okay because then all that you do is you take some of the some of this leftover stuff and just add some glue and then you just place place more in that spot it's very forgiving since it's supposed to look like moss and and grass and stuff like that so if there's some spots where you want more coverage, just add a little bit of glue and um, then just put some of that moss, moss in there. And when I first got them, I wasn't even thinking of the moss. I, um, I originally thought I'm gonna use ribbon. When I went, uh, I want to say it was at, was it at Joanne's? No, it was at Hobby Lobby. When I was at Hobby Lobby, every aisle I went to, the same, I kept running into the same lady. So I ended up talking to her a little bit and uh, kind of told her that I was addicted and I probably would be there longer than what we, we had planned and you can always tell who the crafters are because they all end up in the same in the same aisles over and over so you run into them quite a bit you kind of become little friends at the store even though you might not ever run into them ever again but some people they end up um, asking about my craft page when I tell them and then I find you know theirs or whatever so it's a good way to to get your name out there or um, get new friends or even ideas I've had I've had some people uh, brainstorm with me <laughs> while I was shopping that happened at Dollar Tree one time when I was on the floor looking looking for um, those handles for the mops. Somebody was like, do you need help? And I was like, no, I'm just getting these handles that had fallen because they'll fit in, these sh in those baby shoes and I use them for my gnomes. And they're like, that's a really good idea. And then we just kept brainstorming and it's really fun to chit chat with people. I mean, you could make this like a really elegant, um, a real elegant one. You can make it to like display tea sets or any kind of little collection. I mean, it's not a huge one. It's not heavy, but... It's definitely going to work for what I need it for.
liking that. And there are a couple spots that kind of look bare. So I will end up adding more to it just for coverage. But you can make it as light or as full as you want it. I have seen those wreaths. Uh, my daughter had made one with, it was just yarn that she used. Uh, but I've seen so many different varieties of those. And they turn out so cute. I'm going to add a little bit more in this section just because this will be the front of my display. And like I said, it's going to be a messy a messy um, craft. I find I'm getting hot glue strings all over, but they're fun to make, so, and it turns out so adorable. Okay, so then all that I need is that last one and then I will do a couple of the the mushrooms with those beards and I'll show you how those end up looking And if you guys go to Target and get some of these and you do a different technique, share a picture with me so I can see how yours turned out. I love getting messages from, from all of you with your ideas. There was a gal that, uh, her name is Lucy. She sent me a picture of this mushroom it had like a, a pillow top for his head um and she ended up she ended up creating it and hers turned out so adorable i haven't done those just because the top looks like it was sewn and i'm not that good at at sewing so i would probably try to find a different a different way of creating it just for that fact. But the ones that she had done, they turned out so adorable. And like I said in the past, you know, go ahead and shoot me a message. I do work um, quite a bit. We are shorthanded as well. But I will definitely get back to you as soon as I can. I do check my messages. These are looking so cute. And if you feel that you see too much of the glue, just cover it up with more of the moss. Although with the other one, I did see some of the some of the glue from behind, but it just kind of looks like when you're walking outside and you see different types of moss and 
it has different colors. Sometimes it has a little bit of, I want to call it mold, uh, because you can see some of the white underneath it and everything. So even though you can see a little bit of that glue underneath here, it still works. But you can always cover it, cover it with more. There's no wrong way of doing this. As long as you're having fun with it, it will turn out. I love the effect that it gives. And I can't wait till market for people to see them on display and give me feedback. this I'm kind of trimming as I go just so I can just keep reusing the, the little bits and with these shelves I am prepared I do know that it'll probably lose a little bit of the stuff, so I'll have like little bits down on my tablecloth, but it's just going to give that extra character to my table. It's going to look more woodsy or outdoorsy, and I'm okay with that. I'm almost to that part that it's the hardest part because it's where it's with the other the other pieces I could stop and have that part not even covered since that's in the back but I like going all the way around so I'm gonna go ahead and do the entire thing And my glue gun, what I do is I kind of tip my table. That way I can go from underneath. It, it gives me a little better area to work with.
just bunching it up, placing it where I want it. And then I will trim that up when, when I'm ready, when I have all of this all the way around. Just about done here. So I have it all the way around. So now all that I'm going to do is trim all of this extra off of there. Trim it up how I like it. And I will trim up the top. And there is just a little bit too much fluff towards this back, so I'm going to trim that up as well. So that looks way better than what it did at first. I do feel that it was really plain when I first got them. But you could either wood burn on there, like you could do like a decorative edge with the wood burning tool, or even up here. And see when it's on display Yeah. And they're on display. They look like they're in their natural their natural settings, right? So I'm going to go ahead and set, set this aside and then I'm going to do 
um, a couple of those, those gnomes. Those mushrooms. Just clean up a little bit so it's not so, so crazy. There we go. So I figured with this green one, I would use that gray, that gray beard. And you'll see where I pieced them together because they were in that spool. But this is the one that burned me. But he's going to look amazing. I'm going to get my noses. And I'm grabbing the big ones because with this being a bigger one, I think that nose will stand out a lot more uh, with the big beads. Okay, so I'm going to put some glue on the back of my fur here. And I'm only going, you know, about halfway down and I'm going to snug this up to the top of where that mushroom starts. This way the bottom is not fully attached so you have a little bit of play. Then I will glue down his nose. I will also put a little bit towards the top here. <laughs> He's so cute. He looks good with the gray. And with him, I'm not going to do any embellishments right now. I'll do the, embe the embellishments later on uh, since I have a lot of stuff to do today. But I'm definitely doing the noses and the beards. So with the blue one, I wasn't sure if the blue would be too much or if that would still look all right. Or maybe if I did like a rainbow that just has a touch of blue. Or even like just a normal. Sometimes blue on blue works out. You know, or even red on red. They just work so well. This one I'm setting there. I think this is going to be the... There's my paper again. And I think I'm going to do that one on this one. Okay, so this one I do think I'm going to just do the blue. I'm just going to go for it. This one was just some fur that I had lying around, so it's not pieced together.
Teresa, you are absolutely right. I, I have layered, layered the beards before. It turns out really cute. Today I figured I'm just going to do one. I have so many more mushrooms to work on as well. So I'll probably layer some of those other ones. Oh, I like this one with the blue and the blue. This one will probably be my granddaughter's favorite. So he looks adorable. I love how they turn out. And I'll do the embellishments later. I just want to be able to do some of the, the main part first. I think this one's going to look really cute, too. This is the red one. I'm surprised I didn't see these the last time I was there. Because I definitely would have bought some of these before. Although, Hobby Lobby is such a big store and they have so much stuff that um, it's easy to overlook some of the things. So I'll probably end up using some buttons. I might even add a little bit more of the moss up at the top um, just for that little extra, extra pizzazz. I might even add some bows um, like the, the twine bow with a button um, or you could just leave them plain they don't they don't really need um, embellishments but I I like that part of it oh my goodness they're so cute and I will definitely post pictures of them when they have their embellishments on. Yes, the wooden cutouts, I have used those too. I have tons of them. Tons of them. Uh, I also have uh, these here that I had found at one of the other. They have like the little wooden pieces. And I can color those with, I normally would just use markers. Uh, I would color them, add some of those, or even take some of these, just a little sprig. I would snip off a little piece. Um, this was in a sprig. I would just snip off a little piece, add anything. I even like a little egg or I also have little mushrooms add a mushroom or two to it I'll definitely post pictures these mushrooms um, I got them off of Amazon um, I also have little little pieces of stuff um, or even like little itty bitty pine cones, bows. I also have these little flowers. Um, it was like a little succulent. Um, anything works. You don't have to go out and purchase anything. Just whatever you have lying around would work. So, this is another one that I pieced together. I 
just a reminder for for all of the viewers be very careful when you're using your hot glue so you don't get burnt And then also, um, on a lot of them, I have done, I've taken like a gold um, marker and put three little dots on the noses to make uh, freckles. You could also use a brown, like this one has that small tip. I could do little dots to make freckles. And I love being able to just fluff and make the beards there. I did not use the rainbow one. He'll, I'll probably use the rainbow one on, on a different, on a different one. Because I got these at Hobby Lobby as well. But... I like, if I do the colorful one, I want the top to be nice and colorful as well. So, I will uh, do it that way. So, what I'm going to do, since I'm pretty much done with these, other than the embellishments, and I'll work on those later, I want to get this in view and show you how they're going to look displayed. And then also I could have one not even on the display. He can just be, you know, sitting down next to it but my table is just going to be plastered full of gnomes i'm doing a lot of the small ones this time just to see um how well they do a lot of times i notice the small items go i mean just real quick because people want to be able to just grab and go and they don't want to have to you know, carry tons and tons of stuff. So, uh, also, these would look really cute on the display. Along with these. Or if I did one of the, one of the small ones, I could pair a small one with a big one on there. I think this display these displays are going to be a game changer for my table just because it's going to tie in that gnome theme. And then I'll also set these aside and show you that other one so you can compare this moss with the other one. I don't knock anything over there. And this, the spring moss is softer, where this feels more dried and, and rough. But they both have that same woodsy feel. One's a little bit lighter has more real colors. This one kind of looks like it's been dyed, but that's the cool thing about moss. Um, they have all different, all different colors out in the woods. So even though this one looks dyed, there are some moss out in the woods that is this bright color. And then I'll show you on this one where it's kind of muted. You'll see that they still 
they still look really cute. And I can do more than one. It just works. I cannot wait to use this. Teresa, they do look like cowboy hats. <laughs> and I do have some little um, embellishments that my grandparents had um, when they did their uh, flea markets and stuff. But uh, they had these little things that would go like on shirts, almost like a little um, bedazzle thing. And some of them have horseshoes. And so I thought, well, that would look cute on some of those as well because they do look like horse or uh, like cowboy hats. So the horseshoe embellishment would tie into that really well. Um, or if I have like cowboy boot buttons, that would be a nice embellishment for that as well. So, but I think I'm about done here. I am so glad you guys were able to log on and and catch the live. Um, I'm going to try to get all this stuff kind of out of the way and then I'll bring them bring these into into focus a little bit. Maybe. Let's see. My table's a little small. <laughs> he turned out really cute though. I wasn't sure how the blue and the blue was going to work, but I do like that. All right. Oh, rope would be amazing. Yes. See, that's why I like collaborating with you guys as well. They end up, they end up going in a whole different, different way. Um, I might have to do... I might have to do a lasso on one. I'm thinking maybe the red one. I think he's going to have he's going to have a lasso. I think. I'm going to use your idea. And then I'll have like a horseshoe up here and then I'll hang a lasso down here. And then maybe even like a a bow or something. I'm also going to see if I have any cowboy boot buttons. Because I think that would go good with it as well. So I think he's definitely going to be a cowboy. The orange and the blue one. So this one. And this one. They all turned out so cute. I love, I love how they're so easy. And you... There's no wrong way of doing it. So, <laughs> and I'm sure I have those little, those little shoes that I could make into boots. And I could even put feet on them. Uh, we'll just see where, where it all goes and how much time I have. Because I have, um, I have to work this week. And so I might not have a whole lot of time for, for crafting. But... I'm definitely going to try to get as much done as I possibly can. And I'll be doing the farmer's market every Saturday, um, 8.30 to 11. And uh, if you're in town, boy, I hope you stop by and, and check it out. Um, otherwise, I, I normally post pictures. And ch keep checking back with my page. I might go live again. Who knows? Um, even on a work day, depending on how I am at night, you know, when I get home, I might end up doing another live. But go ahead and do that. And thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in and visiting with me. Um, I really do appreciate all of you guys. And I love chit-chatting with you. So I will talk to you later. And you guys have a great night. Uh, let's see, today is... Thursday. So have a great weekend and I will talk to you later. Bye.